Hey, what's going on? It's Jay Glean back on the scene here with another video. Today, I'm going to be showing y'all how to record vocals inside FL Studio. So let's hop right in and get to it. All right. So first things first, you just want to make sure that you have the correct settings here in FL Studio to record. So you want to come up to the top left of the screen and under options, you just want to select audio settings. This is going to pop up the audio settings page and here in the drop down menu for devices, you just want to select the driver um, for the audio interface that you're going to be using to record with. And this is a good time to mention that you should always have the latest drivers downloaded for your audio interface. So if you haven't already, just go to the company's website that manufactured your interface and find the drivers and install them. And then make sure that you come back here to this drop down menu and select the driver for that audio interface. And if for whatever reason your interface doesn't have Osseo drivers available or if you just don't want to use them, um, then I would suggest using either Osseo for All or FL Studio Osseo. These are going to give you good results. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to select FL Studio Osseo. Okay, so next you want to set the buffer length. And if you're unfamiliar with what buffer length is, it's basically how long it's going to take your computer to process a signal before replaying it through your headphones or speakers. This setting is going to directly determine how much latency you have when recording, meaning how much of a delay there is between when you talk into the microphone and when you hear it played back through your headphones. So when you're recording audio, you just want to make sure that this number is set to a low number. Anywhere below 512 samples is good for recording. Um, I usually use 256 samples and it really all depends on what your computer and audio interface can handle. If you set this number too low and you start to hear cracks and distortion in your audio, then you need to come back and raise the buffer length until those glitches disappear because that means that your computer can't handle that low of a buffer length. Another thing to mention is that when you're finished up with the recording process of your song and you're getting more into the mixing stage where you're going to be loading more and more plugins and applying processing, um, you'll want to come back here and raise the buffer length um, to give your computer more time to process the audio. But long story short, when recording audio, you just want to have a low buffer link so that you're in sync with the music and your vocals aren't lagging behind. So I'm going to leave the buffer length at 512 samples for this tutorial. And now we can go ahead and close all this out. All right, so the first step to setting up the recording process is just going to be opening up the mixer and selecting any of these mixer channels um, that is available. So We'll go ahead and select mixer channel number one, and we're just going to right click and rename it to microphone. And just to be a little more organized, we're going to go ahead and change the color of this mixer channel. Now we can right click on this mixer channel that we have set up for our microphone, and we can select assign to new audio tracks. So here in the playlist, you can see that it created an audio track for us to set up our microphone. So notice here on the microphone channel, there's three little icons at the bottom of the channel. So the first icon right here is going to be where you select your input source. So for me, I have my microphone plugged into channel number one on my preamp. So I'm going to select input number one. So when you select your microphone input for the first time in FL Studio on this audio track, you're likely to get this pop up warning message right here. And it's just asking you if you just want to designate this audio track for your microphone's audio only. So I'm going to select don't ask this in the future and then select yes. Now the second icon right here is where you're going to select whether you want to record just the audio coming straight from your microphone. Um, that would be this option right here, external input only. And that's the option that you're going to want to select the majority of the time. So if you had any plugins loaded onto the mixer channel for your microphone, such as Auto-Tune or EQ, maybe a compressor plugin, um, and you wanted those to be directly applied to the audio file when you record, then you would select Post Effects right here. And that's just going to commit those effects to the audio file. Now, I would advise against doing that because all of that stuff you can add later on when you're mixing the vocal. And we just want to record the vocals dry with no type of effects because there's no reason to really commit to those specific effects when you're recording because you can't come back and change any of those effects later on. So we just want to make sure to select external input only. And that way we record just the audio coming from the microphone. And then down here at the bottom of this list, you also have the ability to either turn on or off um, whether you want to hear yourself coming through the headphones when you're recording. Um, I like to turn that off. Now, if you want to hear your vocal coming through the headphones with effects turned on, such as like auto-tune, um, or maybe you want some reverb, 
you can come to the microphones mixer channel and then over here on the right side you can load any plugins you want over here in the effects slot and then as long as on the microphones channel here you have external input only selected you won't record with those effects applied to the recording you'll just be able to hear yourself coming through the headphones with those effects. And that's how a lot of people like to record, but like I said earlier, I don't even like to hear myself coming through the headphones when I'm recording, so I just go ahead and turn that off altogether. Um, but definitely experiment and see what works best for you. So this last icon right here is where you arm and disarm this audio track for recording. So in other words, where you turn the microphone on and off. So when it's deselected and not highlighted, that means it's disarmed and it's not ready to record. And then when you select this icon, that basically arms the track and it's ready to go for the recording process. Now that we have everything set up, um, let's go ahead and record something. So you wanna come up to the top of FL Studio and make sure that you are in song mode and not pattern mode. That way you record directly to the playlist. Also up here at the top is the countdown before recording. Um, you can turn that off or on. Um, when it's turned on and highlighted, it's basically going to just count down like a three, two, one before you start recording. And then also up here, you can turn the metronome on or off. We're just gonna leave it off for this tutorial. And then the last thing is just to make sure that the record button right here is selected and red. Um, you can right click the record button and right here is where you select exactly what FL Studio is gonna record when you press play. Um, so I go ahead and just make sure all these are checked so that way um, you know, if I wanted to record something on my MIDI keyboard, it's set up. If I wanted to record on my mic, it's set up already right here in the recording tab. So when you first press the record button in FL Studio, you're likely to get this warning message that appears. And like I just showed you, when you right click on the record button, you can select what type of audio um, you want to record in FL Studio. Um, so we just went ahead and selected everything. So that's what this message is just asking you again. So I'm going to select don't ask this in the future. And then I'm going to select that I want to record everything. So we can press play up here at the top or we can press the space bar on our keyboard and that's going to start our recording. So let's go ahead and record something. Hey, what's going on? It's Jerry Gleam and this is how you record vocals in FL Studio. I hope y'all are enjoying this video. All right, so we can see here in the playlist that it recorded our audio um, directly to the playlist with no problem. All right, so next we want to set up another audio track here in the playlist to basically have a place to drag all of our recorded files to. So open up the mixer again and find another mixer channel that's free and available. So mixer channel number two, I'm going to right click and select assign to new audio tracks. Then I'm gonna right click and rename this to main vocals. And you can see here in the playlist, it has that audio track created. And now we have a place for us to drag our recorded files to, and that frees up this audio track to be designated for all of our recording. Now on this new channel that we have set up here for all of our recorded takes, we can have it in a way to where it plays back with plugins and effects loaded onto it. So here on channel number two, we can come over here to the right side of the mixer and we can load an EQ plugin. And then let's say we add some compression. So we'll add the CLA 2A and then I'll throw on some auto-tune. So now when we play back the recorded audio through this channel, it's gonna play it back with those effects applying their processing to it. This gives us the ability to basically mix the vocal as we go, and we can tweak any of the settings on our plugins as we see fit. So any parameter change right here is gonna be directly um, applied to the vocal or any file that's um, existing right here on this channel. So let's go ahead and record something else using the microphone's channel. So make sure that the microphone is armed and the record button is turned on. Let's press play and record something else. Hey y'all, it's Jerry Gleam once again, showing y'all how easy it is to record in FL Studio. All right, so a quick tip, um, when you are moving the audio file from the microphone channel down to the main vocal channel, um, it's gonna be hard to move it down here without moving the cursor left or right. And if you do that, it's going to basically make your vocal out of sync with the beat. So an easy and efficient way to do this is just to use the select tool right here. Um, you can either click it up here at the top left of the playlist or you can press E on your keyboard. And then you just wanna highlight this audio file and then you can click shift down on your keyboard. And that's just going to move this audio file straight up or down to the next audio track. 
I'm zoomed in on the audio file over here and I just wanted to show y'all that anytime that you shorten the audio file or you make like a cut right here in the middle of the clip, um, these sudden changes in the, in the audio, it's going to create like a clicking noise and um, in order to basically smooth out these edges right here, you just want to double click on the audio file and under de clicking mode, you just want to select generic. And then when you zoom in on the audio file, you'll see here that it kind of cross fades and smooths out that transition. Um, so just make sure that you're doing that anytime you're making adjustments to your audio clips. All right, so a quick tip is that when you are recording um, a lot of takes and deleting takes from the playlist, so for instance, let's delete this take right here. Um, you can see that I deleted it from the playlist, but the file is still here in the project. Um, and it's also here in the channel rack. So a quick way to kind of delete the files from the actual project itself and to kind of help free up some space within the project, um, if you come up here to the top under tools and macros and select um, purge unused audio clips. And now you can see that it deleted any file that wasn't being used here in the playlist. And you can see here that the audio file was also removed from the channel rack. So um, you can imagine when you're recording a whole song, how many vocal takes you're gonna do. And they're gonna add up here in the channel rack and they're also gonna add up over here on the left side of the playlist. And it can make things a little confusing and cluttered. So just make sure every once in a while you use that, um, that macro right there to just get rid of all those audio clips. All right, so that's it for today. I hope y'all learned something. If you're still confused about anything, just leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And I'll see y'all in the next video.